evening. It's okay, you can say something. <laughs> so good to see you here. Merry Christmas. Good to see all of you here for our, our Christmas Eve service. We're glad you've come. We, uh, we uniquely end this service, as is our tradition, with a uh, candlelight. So be prepared that we'll, we'll lower the lights even more than they are now. But then we'll raise them up again as we, uh, as we dismiss. So don't, don't fear you'll be walking in the dark. But just wanted to give you that head start. Um, just a great opportunity to be together as the body of Christ. This, this feels right, to be together worshiping our Lord who became flesh. And so we just enter into this holy night, this silent night. And uh, we're glad you're here to be with us. Let's stand now as we prepare for our processional, which is going to be what, David? What's our? Once in, Royal David City. Once in Royal David City. Let's stand for our opening hymn. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Let's say together the collect of purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of your true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of God's holy word. Our children will stay in with us tonight. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, beginning at the first verse. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation you have increased its joy, they rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us the child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let me invite you to stand in response to our first lesson from Isaiah. Let's stand and say together Psalm 96. I will read to the asterisk and ask you to respond with the remainder of the verse. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord and praise his name. Declare his honor to the nations. For the Lord is great and highly to be praised. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. Glory and majesty are before him. Ascribe unto the Lord, O you families of the peoples. Ascribe unto the Lord the honor due unto his name. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is king. It is he who has made the world so firm that they cannot be moved. He shall judge the people of Christ. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea make noise and all that is there. Let the field be joyful and all that is in it. Amen. 
For he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated for the second lesson. The second lesson is from Paul's letter to Titus. The second chapter, beginning at the 11th verse. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we prepare for the gospel, let's stand and sing Angels We Have Heard On High together. Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor in Syria. And all went to be registered unto his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in that same region there were shepherds out in their fields keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they saw it, they made known the, things, the, the saying that had been told them concerning the child. And all who heard it wondered what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts and minds of your church who is gathered tonight. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. I was ordained in the year 2000, so this is the 21st, almost, yeah, 21st year of my ordination, and so I've had 21 years to, to celebrate, to lead in worship on Christmas Eve. Actually, the first time I ever um, was ever given the opportunity to be the celebrant at the, at the Eucharistic celebration was on Christmas Eve in, in the year 2000. So um, I've had a lot of, lot of Christmas Eve days where I'm just sort of thinking about how to spend the day and what, how to be in meditation and how to, how to take in and how to communicate something of importance. Of, of help to us as we contemplate the incarnation, the, the infleshing of God in the person of Jesus. But let me tell you, I have figured out the very, very best way to do that. And so I'm going to share my secret with you. And he's sitting right over here. I want you guys to meet Ridge Shepherd Ward, my grandson. See, he's already meant to be up in front of people. He's Ridge because like his daddy and his grandfather, he's going to be a hiker. And he's Shepherd because he's being taught to love the good shepherd, Jesus Christ. And he's Ward because that's his father's last name. But I'm his, I'm his pops, so... And as I, I spent the day with this little guy, got to feed him and got to let him sleep on me a little bit, I started thinking about the incarnation and I thought, man, what, what better way to enter into a meditative time 
than to, to be holding a baby. Here's the sign the shepherds are told. You'll find a baby lying in a manger. The wonder of the fact that, that God chose to enter into humanity, to become human, is just mind-boggling, right? That God would, would come in, in this weak form. I mean, imagine God not being able to lift his head, not being able to feed himself, not being able, not, not learning to be aware of the fact that there are hands and feet and mouth. Ridge was talking to me a little bit after we fed today, and it was the cutest thing. And we get to think about our, our God entering into our flesh, becoming flesh. Emmanuel, God with us. God, and how do you become human? You, you become human like this. And so for God to enter into our world was for him to have to become as we are, little children. And there's something about all those prophetic words about a child being born. He's cooing. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but he's cooing. It, it, a child being born. Because there's something about with a newborn child, the promise of new life, a new start. And the Old Testament people could have not imagined how it is that God was going to bring salvation through a child. But God knew his plan. And his plan was always to become as a little one. And to enter into our life. And to identify with us as human beings. And to take on a flesh. And then... To offer that flesh for the sins of the world. He tends to go right, so I'm going to, if I go right, he's going to go more right. There he is. I mean, when you put that into perspective and you see a little baby and you know the frailty Christ had to become human through becoming a baby because that's how you become human. That's how you enter our world. But he also came in that great humility to teach us something about how we respond to God. And that's the second thing I want to say to you tonight as we, we contemplate the incarnation. We, we contemplate his enfleshing. We, we recognize that God has chosen to enter into our world, into the, the messiness of our world. And he's chosen to identify with us. And he, he came to take on flesh that he could offer himself for us on the cross. But he also came in humility to remind us that that is how we have to respond to him. I'm struck this time around by reading the gospel narrative, the, the, the nativity narrative. The juxtaposition between Caesar Augustus and Jesus. Augustus was the great nephew of, of Julius Caesar. I don't know if you remember your ancient history. Uh, Augustus was Octavian. He fought off Cleopatra and, and Mark Antony to seize power in Rome. And he became the first Caesar to declare himself Augustus. Augustus was a, a God name, and Octavian took it for himself and began to call himself a God. And it's said in the Roman Empire that at the time of, of Augustus' death that people comforted themselves in the knowledge that, that Augustus was not just a man, but that he was in fact a God. The world seeks to power grab. The world seeks to accumulate power and to eliminate, uh, eliminate enemies and to take what you can. And Jesus comes in complete opposite. Jesus comes in the frailty and the humility of a peasant infant. Born in obscurity. Emptying himself. teaching us that the way to respond and to follow him is not to power grab like Augustus. But to die to ourselves. 
to lay down our power and our privilege and to enter in to the way of Jesus. You see, Jesus was God who became man. Augustus was a man who tried to be a God. And if we're honest, there's a tendency within of us, in each of us in our own way to try to be our own God, to try to be the captain of our own destiny, the master of our own universe, and it simply cannot be done. And when we try, we, we destroy ourselves ultimately. But today we remember the incarnation. And we see in the face of the baby Jesus the way of God that is completely counter to our way. God emptying himself and becoming like a frail child. That he might redeem humanity through his humanity and bring us back into right relationship with the Father. Tonight, if we would be those who follow after Jesus, we have to learn to be like a little child, which is exactly what Jesus said, didn't it? If anyone would come to me, he must become like a little child, trusting in him, surrendering, asking the Lord to show us. Now, how do we do that? It's a daily thing. We do that every day by saying, Lord, here's my life. The Titus passage that Elena read is perfect. Where is the wickedness in me? Where is the waywardness in me? Where am I more like Augustus than Jesus? And I lay it down and I come before you. So tonight, I, I want to invite you to into meditation of God becoming flesh. God humbling self as a small child. God offering his flesh for our sins. God showing us the countercultural way to find the life that is everlasting. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. This is who offers you life today. And he began it as a little child. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In great joy, let us stand together and affirm our faith, the faith revealed to us through Holy Scripture in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life in the world to come. Amen. We invite you to kneel or sit for the prayers of the people. The, the prayers of the people are for all God's people to pray earnestly, to plead before our Heavenly Father with our whole heart, soul, and mind. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for all the well-being and the unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy. For Foley, our Archbishop, Neil, our Bishop, for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, look graciously on your church and so guide the minds of those that shall choose a bishop for this diocese that we may receive a faithful pastor who will preach the gospel, care for your people, equip us for ministry, and lead us forth in fulfillment of the Great Commission through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. For all of those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, we pray especially for our mission partner, the Bishop of Shil Salom Trust. We also pray for the least reach people group of the world, especially the Hua of Northeast Asia. Lord, in your mercy. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith, especially in Somalia, we pray you would give them strength in their time of trouble. We also pray for those who persecute your people. Forgive them. Turn their hearts towards you through the faithful witness of those they persecute. Lord, in your mercy, Hear for our nation, for all in authority, especially our president, our Congress, and our courts, may they administer justice, govern wisely, and strive for the welfare and peace of the whole world. We also pray for first responders, relief workers, and those in the armed forces correct connected to our parish. Lord, in your mercy. For all of those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in your mercy. For all of those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, praying you would grant us grace to follow their good examples, that with them we might partake in your heavenly kingdom. In thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy.
Father, we remember all of those loved ones who are represented by the beautiful poinsettias we have tonight. We ask, Lord, that you would comfort each family in the memory of those that have gone before. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let me invite you to stand now. The peace of our Lord be always with you. We invite you to give the wave of peace to those around. here at Servants of Christ and I have a few quick announcements for us this evening. Uh, just as Alex talked about how, how Jesus humbly entered into our world, we have opportunities to humbly enter into the world of our neighbors and bring light and love just as Christ did to us. And here are a couple of those that we have coming up. So the first one is our next door neighbors at Littlewood Elementary School. They are looking for mentors to meet with students once a week. This is a huge benefit to the school and the teachers can really see the difference in the kids who have mentors. And so if you're interested in that, this Thursday, uh, not this Thursday, but on Thursday, January 6th, We'll have a Zoom training at 3 p.m. that will cover everything from what do you do when you come into the building to what do you do when you meet with students and how can we equip you with uh, tools and ways to meet with them. This is only a 30 minute a week commitment, so if you're interested in that, please contact Blakely Porter. Her information is on the digital bulletin. Secondly, um, each year we, we take up offerings for scholarships for the Bishop Ochiel Siloam Trust. This is a scholarship fund for high school students and college students in, in Kenya, in addition for funds for building water tanks there. And this uh, is especially important to us here at Servants because this is a 
initiative of the diocese that first took us in um, when we did not have a place to go in our church uh, time back, what was it, 15 years ago. So you can still uh, give a donation for that. Um, and if you would like information on that, you can go online to servantsanglican.org slash give, or you can contact Janice Ladd. Her information is also in the digital bulletin. And just uh, two quick things. One is this Sunday we will still have a service here at 930. You are welcome to join. Also, if you'll be out of town, it will be live streamed as well. You can find information for that on our website. Uh, the, the last thing is we're about to enter into a time of communion. This table, it's not an Anglican table, it's a Christian table. And all baptized Christians are welcome to come and receive. Uh, we'll be giving out the, the bread and we'll be dipping it in the wine. If for any reason you are uncomfortable with that, please just signal to myself or Alex who are distributing that and we will make sure that we do not dip yours in the wine. And uh, additionally, if you would like to come forth and receive a, br a blessing, but not receive communion, you are welcome to do that as well. Come forward with your hands crossed, and Alex and I will say a prayer o over you. Now, as we enter into this song, let, let us remember these words. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. in the sky but the Spirit of God went down into Egypt from here to high no place for his parents no country or tribe and they ran and they
stand together and sing Psalm 72's refrain as our doxology. be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and of earth. Because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by his Holy, the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, his mother, was made truly man, yet without stain of sin, so that we might be cleansed from sin and be given the right to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Lord, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory that we might com come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. and When he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. For this is the blood, my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. 
Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us with all your saints into that joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace.
Gracious Father, we come before you tonight and we ask for your guidance and your direction, your leadership. Lord, we are we're in a troubled time and Father, we're confused and divided and we need you to be our Prince of Peace. We need you to be our wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father. Draw us to your beautiful kingdom. And Lord, make us boldly proclaimers of that kingdom. Let us be lights set on the hill and not covered under a bushel. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let us pray the post-communion prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Tonight, we're not going to process outside and make you stand outside with your candles, so let me go ahead and do the, uh, the post-communion prayer, and then we'll, we'll do the recessional. So, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let's sing Joy to the World. Alan, if you'll bring the lights back up. Joy to the world. Sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sin and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make. Curse is found, far as, far as a curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glory. of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love
All of our problems, we send to the cross of Christ. All of our difficulties, we send to the cross of Christ. All the devil's works, we send to the cross of Christ. And all of our hopes, we set on the risen Christ. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. And a very Merry Christmas to all of you. So have a wonderful, safe night. Good night. shall see every nation shall see God's glory as the light descends God's glory as the light descends come all and gather around a strange sons and daughters come home the fabled Messiah now found, sent through a virgin's womb, every heart is aflame. Every heart is aflame. As all the beautiful sing. As all the beautiful sing. For, for the manger. Oh, Bethlehem cradles a king, a king, a king. We rejoice in the light and we echo the song. Come down to break the night from the heavenly throne. I we shall, I we shall, our future hope has finally come, our future hope has finally come, and we greet in his cradle, our Savior and our King. Coming near through a child, a child.